Hello dear students, welcome to the course of Engineering Thermodynamics. Myself, Mihir Misri, Assistant Professor from Mechanical Department of LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. So today we are going to continue our session on vapor power cycles and in particularly we are going to discuss about various factors that are affecting the performance of Rankine cycle. Okay, so before continuing this lecture you should watch the typical working of Rankine cycle video. Okay, so now let us start our discussion. So the various factors that may affect the efficiency of Rankine cycle are condenser pressure, boiler pressure and superheating. Okay, so very first is condenser pressure. So as you can see in order to understand the funda, we are drawing a TS diagram as shown on the screen. In this TS diagram, the normal Rankine cycle is represented by 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So that is the normal Rankine cycle. And the revised Rankine cycle is represented by 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 and 4 dash. Now what we are supposed to do over here, let us understand that, that if we decrease the condenser pressure, right? So for decreasing the condenser pressure, you know that, that in TS diagram, you should be aware that in TS diagram, if you draw the pressure line, right, constant pressure line, so uh, that constant pressure line will be horizontal one within the saturation vapor dome, okay, and outside the saturation vapor dome, that is on the left hand side and right hand side, the same constant pressure line will be inclined one, okay. What I am trying to say is, if you refer the steam formation diagram lecture there, you will be very much clear about how this constant pressure line can be drawn on the TS diagram, right? Okay, so here if for 4 to 1, right? So you should know which component is used between 4 to 1, okay? So you know the working of typical Rankine cycle in which uh, boiler, then turbine, then condenser, then pump, all these devices are used. Here, during 3 to 4, we will have turbine. During 4 to 1, we will have condenser. We will, during 1 to 2, we will have pump. And during 2 to 3, we will have boiler. Okay. So now, during this condenser section, as you can see over here, 4 to 1 is a horizontal line that represents what? The constant pressure is there during the condensation process. Okay. So now, if I am decreasing the condenser pressure, then what will happen? Obviously, if I will decrease the pressure, then temperature will also decrease, right? So that is why corresponding to 4-1, if I will decrease the pressure, then the low pressure line will be below the 4-1 line. So as you can see, the new line is drawn by dotted line that is 4 dash, 1 dash, okay? So that is nothing but the representation of decrease in condenser pressure. Okay, students, I hope everyone is clear. Now let us understand the effect of decreasing the condenser pressure. Okay, so now first of all we will understand here by simple way. Now you can see that work done or net work done is equal to what? So net work done is equal to the area enclosed by the cycle that will give you the net work done. Here in the original cycle the net work done can be identified by the area enclosed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 cycle. Okay, that is the net work done during the original cycle. Now, if we are, we are modifying the Rankine cycle, then what we are doing? We are decreasing the condenser pressure. So now if we will decrease the condenser pressure, now observe the new cycle or the area enclosed by the new or revised cycle. So the new area is equal to what? 1 dash, 2 dash, 3, 4 dash, 1 dash, right? So as you can easily visualize over here in the diagram that if we will decrease the condenser pressure, then the net work done will increase. Clear everyone? Okay. One more thing is that, another thing is that, that efficiency. Now you know that the equation of efficiency is equal to what? Work done divided by heat supply. Right? So now here, in this equation, work done has increased. Right? Now divide by heat supply. So now let us understand over here that in main cycle compared to the original cycle, the modified cycle in which we have decreased the condenser pressure, if you observe, then the heat supply has increased by some amount. Sir, how much amount is increased? That amount is nothing but equal to A dash, 2 dash, 2 A, A dash. Okay, that much amount of area is increased 
in the heat addition because and as you might be aware that I have told you many times that on TS diagram if you plot any curvature then the area under that curvature will give you the heat transfer during that particular process. So here we know that during 2 to 3 the heat addition process is taking place right. So uh, apart from 2 to 3 because of the decrease in the pressure in the condenser additional 2 dash 2 has been added to 2 to 3. Right, I am repeating again, additional 2 dash 3 line has been added to the 2 3 process. Okay, that means that much additional heat is supplied. Okay, now here you can appreciate that the net work done increase is somewhat higher than the heat transfer or heat supply. Right, so that means what ultimately the effect will be such that that the efficiency of the rental cycle will increase if you will decrease the condenser pressure okay so that is the effect of condenser pressure so now here one more thing observe students that observe the point number 4 and 4 dash okay so if you observe the point number 4 and 4 dash what is the significance of point 4 and 4 dash the significance of point 4 and 4 dash is that that corresponding to point number 4 your dryness fraction will be somewhat higher let us say for example 0.9 and corresponding to 4 dash, your dryness fraction will decrease than 0.9. That means it will be lower than 0.9 because it is at lower point uh, compared to the fourth point. Okay. So corresponding to 4 dash, your dryness fraction might be 0.8. So now that is not desirable. Okay. Because if you will decrease the condenser pressure, then what will happen? Your steam at the later or in later stage of the turbine or later stage of the lower pressure turbine in particular will be having more wet more wet portion so if wet steam is there so that will erode the material of the blade of the turbine so that is not desirable right so that is why here in the condenser pressure you cannot decrease the condenser pressure other than certain limit so there is certain limitation so what is the limitation limitation is that that uh, you should consider or decrease the condenser pressure such that the dryness fraction shall not fall below 10%. Okay, so that is also one more thing you should consider. Okay, now next effect is what? Next effect is effect of superheating. So let us understand the effect of superheating. So in order to understand the effect of superheating, we will consider the diagram that is shown on the screen. So as you can see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, that is the original cycle and by superheating it, you can observe the modified cycle that is 1, 2, 3 dash, 4 dash and back to 1, right? So here you will appreciate that 3, 3 dash, 4 dash, 4, that much area of net work done has increased. Clear students? That much area of net work done has increased. So that means that will reflect in increasing the efficiency of the red guide cycle right but here you can observe one advantage of superheating steam what is another advantage another advantage of superheating steam is that observe the point number 4 and 4 dash compare it so corresponding to point number 4 it might be possible that your dryness fraction is 0.85 and corresponding to 4 dash your dryness fraction might be 0.95 that is advantageous for us if the dryness fraction has increased by superheating the steam so that is advantageous to us so that will give us more long life for the turbine blades okay so that is the advantage of superheating steam other than the increase in efficiency okay now let us move further effect of boiler pressure okay so in order to understand this phenomena what we can do is we can consider the diagram as shown in the uh, screen so as you can see the TS diagram is shown over here so in this TS diagram the original cycle is 1 2 3 4 and back to 1 right so that was the original cycle okay now if we increase the boiler pressure that means what is the process procedure or process corresponding to boiler the process for endpoints corresponding to boiler is 2 to 3 right so if you will increase the boiler pressure then it will be highlighted by 2 dash 3 dash right so here that is the modified cycle so modified cycle is represented by 1 2 dash 3 dash 4 dash and back to 1 okay now let us observe over here that if you observe then the normal hatch portion 
is showing us the increase in the net work done. Okay, and the cross hedge portion that is shown that is nothing but reduction in the net work done. Okay, now question might be in your mind, so sir, how the efficiency will increase? So simple students observe that the heat rejection has decreased. Okay, now observe the original cycle. For original cycle, the heat rejection is equal to how much? A 1 4 B. That area will represent the heat rejection. Now for the modified cycle, after the increase in the boiler pressure, what will be the heat rejection? Heat rejection will be A 1 4 dash and B dash. So as you can see, the later area that is A 1 4 dash B dash has reduced by some amount. So, if heat rejection has reduced, that will yield to the increase in the efficiency. Okay, clear students? I hope everyone is clear. Now, one more thing is that the uh, net work done that has increased is shown by 2 dash, 3 dash, 2, right? So, that is the normal hedge portion, right? And the reduction in the net work done is shown by the cross marks. Okay, so the both area are nearly same okay so the the increase in the efficiency here will depend on the heat rejection more okay so that is why we have thought by that point of view okay so that is very easy to understand that if you will increase the boiler pressure or if you will decrease the condenser pressure and if you will increase or superheat the steam then your efficiency of the red can cycle will increase but here you should consider that also that in real life power plant if you will use any one phenomena or any one factor to increase the efficiency of the Rankine cycle so that will not be noticeable compared to the amount you have expanded right for the same thing what I am trying to say is in real life power plant that if you want to increase the efficiency marginally or significantly then one should go for the combination of this effect not only single effect okay so that is the real life cases ideally the efficiency will increase but in real life cases that increase might not be that much significant so that is why one should go for the combination of these cases and from that thing we have discussed the reheat regenerative and other cycles right okay so we'll keep up to this point, thank you.